Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. So I have a motherboard that I've replaced literally everything, including CPU, graphics card, everything. And I was able to even do a BIOS update. Uh, whatever the reason, it starts up. Sometimes it'll get to Windows and crash. Sometimes it'll get to repairing, automatic repair, but then crashes. No matter what I've done, that's where it's at. So, in this video, I have a bunch of different scenarios we're going to go through. So if you're having this problem, maybe it will help you. Even if it doesn't help me, it doesn't mean it can't help you. Alright, so we're going to try them out and see what happens. A lot of people, when this is happening, they'll tell you, oh, do this, do that. And the things they're trying to tell you to do, well, when the system isn't booting up in the first place, you can't get in and do those things. So this one is what happens when you can't get in at all. So I'm going to show you. So we're going to go through a couple different scenarios. I'll do them so that they're in chapters. So the one that applies to you, you can go and look at it. All right. So let's get going. Okay. So this is the motherboard. Gravity Square is on here. It's just got a 1080 uh, Cooler Master all the stuff I've reviewed before um, started up I'll show you what happens when it first started uh, I've changed power supplies three times so this one here is the 1500 watt uh, straight power 12 from be quiet more than capable of powering all this up uh, I've got the 8 pin and the 4 pin uh, plugged into the motherboard so that it's not possibly that the 24 pins plugged in everything so I'll show you what happens when I first started you'll see it on the screen and um, then we're going to start doing the troubleshooting steps. So I have my little button here. So I'm going to push that. It's the same as touching your two pens together. Okay, so we're going to show the screen here. You'll see it come up. It'll either do automatic repair. Yep. Yeah, and then a couple seconds and then it'll crash. I I've even had it get to Windows once or twice. So that's it. Gets up, crashes. So if this is an issue you're having, hopefully one of these repairs will work and it'll help you. If not, well, maybe one of them will help your scenario. All right, because I'm going to go through a couple different ones. Okay, so the first scenario I'm going to go through, I'll read through it first, and then we're going to do step by step. So the first one is to restore your computer to a previous point before the problem started. Well, you can't do that one if you can't get to the screen just do it but i'm going to try it so you re to restore it okay restart your computer holding down the shift key which i got to get a keyboard connected and hopefully that'll take to the start menu and you can troubleshoot it and you go to your advanced options system restore restore to a, a new restore point or a previous one that you knew your system was working and you'll be able to do that i don't know if i can even get to that step but we're going to try it uh, once I hook up a keyboard uh, and a mouse and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we have a keyboard and a mouse hooked up. I'm going to hold down the left shift key. Okay, holding that down, we're going to restart. So start it up and we'll see what happens. I don't think it's going to work on this PC, but we're going to do it. So start the computer holding down the left shift key. And we're going to see if it will take us into the troubleshooting steps. If it does, that'll be the first. Okay, that did not work. If you want to follow that though, so remember, hold down the left shift key. If it works for you, go to the advanced startup menu, go to troubleshoot, go to advanced options, system restore, select a restore point and click next to restore. Okay. And then hopefully your PUC will work. Okay, scenario one did not work. Let's move on to scenario two. Okay, so the second solution that might work for you, and again, I'm just putting these out there because some of these will work for you if you're having this problem. All right. So solution number two, which I know is not going to work in this case, so I'm just going to tell you what it is. You're going to hold down the left shift button. So basically this is to repair any boot files, all right, that might be causing your problem, all right, using the command prompt. But 
I'm just going to walk you through it because mine doesn't work. So restart your computer with the left shift key. Once you get to the advanced startup menu, you will open on the boot. All right, go to troubleshoot, advanced options, and select command prompt. All right, then you can run these different commands. You can run check disk, space C, full colon, uh, and I'll put this on the screen, uh, slash F, slash R, hit enter. Then you're going to go after that, you're going to go S, F, C, space, slash, scan now. So S, C, A, N, N, O, W, hit enter. Then you're going to go to disk part, hit enter. Select disk zero, hit enter, and then list volume and press enter. Verify that the EFI partition, or EPS, is using FAT32 file system and assign a drive letter to it that's not already in use. Select volume, number of volume, press enter, assign letter equals said, and press enter, exit, and press enter. All right, that's all part of solution two, by the way. So in order to repair the boot record, so this is yet another step. So it says in order to repair the boot record, you're going to do CD slash D um, said, I don't know why they're using said, full colon slash EFI slash Microsoft slash boot and hit enter. This is all part of the same solution too. Okay. So the solution I'm going to go with isn't typing a whole bunch of letters or anything. It's going into the BIOS because I know I can get to the BIOS by just holding down uh, the delete key. Now you can spam it, but you really, when the flash screen comes up, all you have to do is hit the delete, it'll take you into your BIOS, all right? So I'm gonna fix it so you can see both uh, the screen and what I'm doing. I'm basically restarting, holding down the, the delete key or spamming it. Basically, I'm gonna hit the delete key when the flash screen comes up. You'll see what that is here in a second. So give me one second. Okay, I'm going to hit restart and my finger is posed over the delete key. As soon as the screen comes up with the uh, Aorus, okay, there, I hit it, I didn't hit it fast enough, so I don't think I got it. So I'm going to have to try this again. All right, so we're going to try it one more time. And I'm just going to hit the delete key because it goes too quick for me to um, catch it when the screen comes up. So I'm just going to spam it until there. Now it's going to take me into the BIOS. All right. Now, one of the things I did read, all right, I'm going to move this closer so you can see what I'm doing. So one thing that I've come across that can cause problems is CSM. All right. So we're going to go through the BIOS. I'm going to show you some of the stuff. And one of the interesting things that I've come across is the system shuts down right away. So you think, well, how am I going to fix it? I can't do anything. Well, guess what? When you're in the BIOS, it doesn't shut down. So for me, that means that the motherboard works, the CPU works, something's going wrong. If it was overheating, it would still shut down, as far as I know. Um, and you wouldn't be able to do anything. So you can see the temperature is showing for the CPU, 30 degrees. All right, so we don't have any issues there. Uh, the advanced memory settings it says power down enabled it's disabled memory sometime okay so it's not that we're just gonna go back to tweaker here again I am gonna find the uh, they call CSM and we're gonna click on there but first let's go to boot All right CSM support disabled I'm gonna I'm gonna try there we go enabling it Hopefully, that will help. Okay, it's enabled now. I am going to save and exit, and I'm just going to do a normal reboot and see what happens. So, save and exit. So, save and exit setup. Come oh, on. Got to double click everything here. Save the configuration and reset, and of course, yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done anything. 
Now let's see what happens. It should restart, boot up. Whether it fixes that or not, I don't know. If it does, it will have been a long time. I haven't been able to use this. And that one thing fixed it. I'd be really surprised if it does. But pleasantly so. So it's restarting. I've got no screen yet. That's promising. Now at this point, yeah, it's going to shut down. So this is where it gets annoying. So you can reset your BIOS to the default values, all that kind of stuff. And none of that so far has worked for me. So this video is giving you a couple solutions you can use, but it doesn't help me. And if you're having the same scenario, it may not help you. So we're going to keep playing around. When I find the solution, you'll see it. Okay, so ultimately, I um, decided that I'm going to update the BIOS. Uh, so basically, I downloaded the file. So it's F37F right now. This The new version is F38. So I'm updating the backup BIOS as well as the new one. Hopefully, this could be the problem. So if you've been getting crashes repeatedly, even sometimes booting up to Windows, maybe this will fix it. All right, so I went into uh, Q flash, which basically means booting up, hit the delete key to get into the BIOS like we did before, hit the Q flash after you've already downloaded the appropriate file for your BIOS. All right, you don't need to change it, you don't need to rename it, anything. Just if you do, it won't recognize it. Just download that file, put it in where it says BIOS on your motherboard restart comes up to your hit the delete key to get into your BIOS hit the Q flash button or F8 and then proceed and click on your file and do the update so right now we're at 67 percent it's updating the backup BIOS as well as this one and hopefully fix anything that's been going wrong one thing I did notice is that the BIOS update uh, the date and time are wrong. Now believe it or not, that can be enough to cause you issues. So I'm going to check that afterward and make sure I fix it, if I'm able to. And you can see update BIOS is going to the F38, checksum 268F, alright, and the BIOS for this one is 2024, the third, 22nd of March. So this is very, very recent. So, here's hoping. It's going to reboot. And just to verify, I'm going to hit the delete key to get back into the BIOS again once it's up. But once I see it, I know I can do that. It should just let me go right into the BIOS and see it. It will take a little bit, so don't be spamming that key just yet. Okay. Okay. Now, and now we have the newest update for the BIOS. Shows my RAM, shows the CPU, the new BIOS version. All right, so again, all I did when I went into here, hit the delete key, went down to Q flash, click on update BIOS. Your file will show up here. It's on my verbatim, that's the drive I'm using. Click on your file here, click on this button, and it will update. All right, so if you need to just do a BIOS update, you can go ahead with that. If you get to this point and you're like, oh, I'm not sure, on this part of the screen it says escape or go back, hit that button, and you're back into just where everything is at. So I'm going to exit and see what happens. Yes. Honestly, I've tried this before. The earlier version did not work. If somehow it was corrupted, maybe this one will work. I honestly don't know. But I'm crossing my fingers. So after updating the BIOS and it not working, there's a couple other things I'm trying. So I've changed the SVM mode, 
from disabled to enabled and the global C state control from auto to disabled. I don't know if it'll work. We're going to try it yet again. Holy cow. That actually worked. I have no idea why, but I'm in the windows. Changing those two things. Remarkable. After all this time. Now I want to do updates and stuff, so yeah, okay. So the only other thing I did was I changed the date in the BIOS. I noticed the date and time was wrong. So I changed that. Maybe that had something to do with it too. Although I did reboot after I did that and it didn't seem to make a difference. But changing the C state, that made a difference. You've seen it here, folks. Well, folks, I've done a lot of troubleshooting in my time. And this is the most crazy one I've come across. So first I couldn't even get into Windows at all. And if it did happen to come up, which every now and then it would, it would crash within about five seconds. It's still running. It's still up there doing its thing. And you saw the last two things that I did. So C state, I would go with C state. I don't know what SVM even does, but I did read about it down below. I just forget it was. But I did read that those two things could make a difference. Now, maybe I should have done one at a time. Try C-State by itself first. If that doesn't work, then turn them, do them both, or do them independently and see what happens for yours. All right, I, I'm still in shock that this has been a system I haven't been able to run for months because I just haven't had time to get to it when I've got all these other systems. But it's working now, which means now I can build a system around it. I can put it into a case. I can get it going. Knowing the motherboard is working, the graphics card is working, everything. So there you have it. So I will put all of the, uh, you'll see it in the video. You've already seen it if you're watching this now. All the different codes I put in along the way that I was reading off to say what they were, all these different things you can try. Now, if it shuts down again after all this, well, then I'll have to start again with more troubleshooting. But so far, it's running fine. I don't know why. This is the most complicated, complex thing I've ever done. Maybe changing the date, updating the BIOS, all that. Maybe that's what happened. Irregardless, it's working, and I'm happy about it. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your experiences have been. Have you ever run across anything like this? Put it in the comments down below. If you have any other thoughts, uh, please share them. And share them so other people can get some information as well. All right? So if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Uh, think about subscribing if you're new here. Hit that bell for notifications for videos that come up in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.